Okay, so part two. Uh, this is going to go over variables and then code replacements. I'm going to try to make this video a lot quicker. Uh, time flies when you're recording videos, I swear. So, uh, first off, variables. <clears throat> so we're going to go inside the IPTC stationary pad. And as I mentioned before, uh, you're probably wondering what this is right here. Day, year, city, state. Those are just variables. And what that is is basically it's just a preset to where whatever you have over here in this area for day, uh, like up here, I have it set to capture time. So whatever my camera's day is set to, it'll automatically fill that in. Same with the year, uh, city, it's going to fill it in, whatever is over here in the city, or uh, and all of that, everything, state, country, it's just going to, it just makes it faster. And how you use that is you just go down here in the IPTC stationary pad, variables down here. And you have all this stuff. These are all variables. Um, for day, you just go down to time. Let's click day. Uh, let's go right here and see. Put it right here. And then that'll show up. Um, and then uh, we would put, so let's just do it down here. Let's put February and space day comma, space, and then year. Uh, you can put uh, year two if you just want to put like 14. And then if you want to put 2014, which is what I have, you put year four. And then we'll put a dash. So, so we'll go space, dash, space, and then city. Uh, that would be, let's see, up here. Uh, and under IPTC's fields. City, comma, and then we need state. I think it's in the same section. Yep, it would be state, comma, stat. And then comma, and then we need country, which I think it's in the same section too. Yep, country, comma, CNTY, dash. And then in the first half during the game between USA and South, oops, South Korea at the stub hub center in and then again city and state credit image colon Seth Sanchez slash Cal sport media so that's how you would do that I literally just imitated exactly what I had up here and so what the variables do is when you have those set, once you pick the ones over here, whatever your job requires you to do, or if you're doing it for like a high school paper or something or whatever, you want to put it the way you want it. They don't like specifically tell you how to do it. It's just like up to you. Once you have that all set up, um, let's exit out here. And video's done uploading. Once that's done and you close stationary and then you ingest, um, the files, boom, you can come over here and see February, I had that set already, and then the day, this was the day that uh, my camera was set, so it's gonna, today is uh, the third, I believe, yeah, um, but the camera was set to first, so that's why it's really important to make sure your camera's right, but this, this shot I took right here of a South Korean player for soccer was shot on February 1st, and then 2014, it was shot in Carson, California. United States of America, and the rest of the caption is already there. So that's what variables does. It just makes it quicker, and it's just really nice. And now I'm going to go over um, code replacements. Code replacements is a website, codereplacements.com. Uh, it's a you can do a monthly subscription or a, a yearly subscription or even three years. And let me let me see how much it is. So you can do a three year code replacement subscription for a hundred bucks, a one year subscription for about fifty five bucks and so on. You can do one month to just try it out. You can do PayPal. You just fill out all the information and then you log in and once you're logged in you have all this up here. Uh, PGA for pro golf, NCAA, they have football, men's basketball, women's basketball. They have a custom one over here. You can fill it out yourself and get uh, your own roster. So what they do is they have automated rosters for sports photographers and it's updated constantly so you don't have to keep getting rosters and you know uh, messing around with them at the game and trying to like make sure everything's uh, written out properly and you can just imagine how much time it saves because I'm going to show you what it does. So I already have one already in, uh, installed into uh, Phone Mechanic but if you were to get one you would just say you're covering uh, NFL. 
and then you pick phone mechanic if you're using phone mechanic and then home team prefix let's just say recovering on the minnesota vikings so we'll put mv for our prefix for minnesota vikings and we come down here and we oops we find them uh where are you minnesota vikings so that's for the home team and then let's just say the away team is uh gb for green bay packers uh green bay packers and then our roster data source, you can use NFL or ESPN, it doesn't matter, just do NFL. Uh, and jersey number codes, if you want to, yes, I do for my job. Uh, they want it like this for the parentheses. Uh, you got your short code, long name, yes. Uh, and it has a little example down here. Uh, yes, uh, tab codes. Include NFL officials, like the, the refs. Um, yes or no, I don't really care. Sometimes people, you know, it's really up to you. If you take a picture of a, a ref and you want to say who, who he is, they'll tell you. Uh, include useful football codes like touchdown, TD, FD for first down, STAD for the stadium name for the home team. Um, I don't care about that. And then, yes, this is a bracket thing I mentioned in my previous video about how you need to, in the subcat 2 category, you need to put the person's name involved in uh, brackets. I need to put their first name and last name, so that way. And then you create the roster. And then you download it, comes down here, and let's exit out here. Where'd you go? There you are. Open it up, and here it is. And this is over here is the coding. Um, so MV23 would be the Minnesota Viking running back Joe, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, Bonyard 23. Um, so that's what it does. And once you have this file, how you put it inside phone mechanic is you go inside you click on phone mechanic and you go to the edit you go all the way down to settings set code replacements and I already have the soccer one set up but and then you would add one and then just it lets you browse for it mine's on my desktop you know NFL and it's right there and I can remove it and go back so I have a soccer one installed for this right so in the previous video I mentioned uh, I showed you what it did um, so let's just say these aren't edited yet, so let's just go over to, let's find a good photo. Who, I need to see one with the number. Um, sorry, trying, there we go. This one's a little bit dark, but it's not edited yet. This game was really difficult to shoot. It was dealing with sh shadow and light. They were running back and forth, but that's easily can be corrected if you, especially if you're shooting raw. And with a 1DX like that, when you're shooting raw and just being able to boost up the highlights or the um, shadows and the exposure to make up for something like this is very, very helpful. So in this image, we've got South Korean player number 11 and US player number five. So we need to explain what's going on. So let's say, so we go here, here's our, caption area and what code replacements does is you put forward slash let's say we're going to start out with us player number five so forward slash us that's what i had set five forward slash and boom it gives me usa his position the team he plays for his position his full name and his number usa defender matt bessler five um we can just say um fights or we can just mention the other person i could say uh and South Korea 11 forward slash uh, Lee Kion Ho fights for the ball in the first half during the game. And you can see, imagine how much more time it would have taken to look back and forth at the computer screen and the roster, trying to figure out his position, his name, and put his number, and then put South Korea forward Lee Kion Ho 11, just having to type that out. Let's just do an example here. So let's say we're looking at the thing like, okay, he's USA, he's a defender. His name is Matt Bessler, and he's number five. And then, and the other guy involved is South Korea forward Lee Kion Ho 11. Fights for the ball. See how much longer that took? And then we can just go like this. Here's another example. Ready? US 5. And SK11 fights for the ball. See how much faster that was? It is well worth it. I highly suggest you guys get this. It's called Code Replacements. You can get it at codereplacements.com. You pay a subscription. It's cheap. It's affordable. 
it saves you so much time and this is really important for a job like this especially if you're shooting for a pro event or college level and you're doing this where you need to send files quickly you're gonna beat your competition I mean everybody has this most likely but it's still you keep you're keeping up with them and it, it's very important to be able to be quick and um, consistent and accurate with your captioning and you need to be able to send the files over fast you need to be as quickly as be as quick as possible and there's no time for mess ups and you you can imagine how hard it is to make sure you're spelling everything precisely and making sure everything is perfect but when you have code replacements it automatically has the roster all ready to go and it just makes your workflow so much faster and I love this program um, phone mechanic and I love code replacements it is well worth it so I think that's the end for the photo mechanic I may make another video later on but I think that's pretty much the, uh, the sum of it so Again, uh, let's recap. Phone mechanic. Um, you basically, hold on one second. Delete these so it doesn't have doubles. You open up phone mechanic, command G, control G for PC. You pick what you want. Oh, that's going to die. You pick what you want to ingest. Here's your stationary pad with all the information. You want to preset this stuff as much as you can, like this, before the game. So you don't have to do this while you go in during the second, the first half or the the halftime and do all this. This is all ready, okay? And then you ingest. Here they all come. Uh, once they're all loaded, you hit I, and then you look at the picture. You can zoom in right here if you just click on this little thumbnail. Hold the mouse down. Uh, and you look, and if you can't tell who the player was, luck. You hopefully uh, looked up after you took the picture and located the player that you shot, and then you can talk. Nine. Okay. I saw him, he's number nine. Put the description, save over here, and move on to the next photo. Okay, who's this? 22. Okay, he's warming up. Put a description of that. Okay, move on. Um, so that is what this program does. Um, again, you can hit T to tag. You can see the check mark on the bottom right of the photo. Uh, so you just want to pick the ones you want. You know, keep going. Pick all the good ones. And then you go over here, and then click tagged. And only the tagged ones are showing up. And then that way you just you're capturing the good ones and all the bad ones are kept out of the way so you don't have to like figure out oh I don't know it just makes your workflow faster. Um, and then you caption all these. And then once you're done captioning them, I uh, do Command A or Control A for PC. And then Command E or Control E for PC. Yes. And then boom moves them over into Photoshop. And then it loads them into Adobe Camera Raw if you're shooting raw. Uh, this is a I don't I'm not all that. Uh, knowledgeable on Photoshop. I don't know how to do this properly with JPEGs. So I apologize. Um, I tried it. And I just didn't know how to like handle a batch of files on Photoshop. JPEG or with JPEG on RAW, it gives you Adobe Camera Raw, and it's just really easy and consistent. And I this is how I do it. Um, so you know, it's really. I'm sure there's videos out there that show how to do it with JPEG, or you probably already know how to handle a batch of files with JPEG. I don't. Um, I, I used to use Lightroom, but my company told me do not use Lightroom. It messes with their servers, so they require Photoshop. So once you're done editing all these and uh, cropping them, then you uh, save them properly, however they wanted you to save them. They have a specific quality size they want you to save, depending on who you're working for. You hit Done, and then they save into the folder you selected, and then you drag them into the uh, FTP server and send them out. And that is the workflow for this for a, a typical photojournalist. I uh, hope this video helped. Um, I uh, hope it helps you make a decision on if you're going to get this program and uh, subscribe to Code Replacements. I hope you do because it will save your life and it will save you so much time.